Chapter 1111 The Twelve Gates of Bliss You are listening at NovelFull.audio I Won't Surrender Raven's loud voice sounded in the pitch.black cavern, feeling a tightness in his chest, gasping for air as his body suddenly moved, his left arm reaching for the skies as if to pluck the stars themselves and smash them to the ground. Ha, ha. He began to breathe with slow, bated breaths, still feeling the unbearable pain in his body, like magma filled his veins, traveled through his entire body and charred his arteries. His state was awful, he could barely lift or move his body, slowly waiting for his senses to return fully. Fuck. What is there so much blood everywhere? Wait. His deep voice echoed through the cavern, deeper and more magnetic than before, but still close to his original, not enough to make people curious or ask questions, maybe thinking he just smoked too much. Raven tried to move his body, feeling a strange sensation filling his body, the crackling sound as dried blood began to peel from his chest, the black shirt his father had prepared now gone, mere scraps of burnt cloth on the ground, his black shield crushed and deformed into a small ball. But that wasn't what stunned him as he looked around, feeling delighted and fearful at what had happened. Why can I see so clearly, in this complete dark? Strange. He felt it was bizarre as not only his sight, but now he could hear the sounds of small insects chirping from near the entrance, the little bugs rubbing their legs causing him to wince with a headache as he began adjusting. He could remember that purple gemstone, with the same markings as the manticore Lilith, the ring on his finger reacting to it strangely before it bore into his chest, and the pain caused him to black out. This. Was this maybe meant for Lilith? Have I done something irreparable by using her ring? What is my class like? What about the talent I should have unlocked? Guilt began to overrun him for a moment before he shook his head. No, let's be realistic. Would she have entered the dungeon? Could the chest have been guaranteed to appear for her? Either way, I have taken the benefits of this ring and will use it to the utmost limit. Raven took a deep breath, the brittle rocks almost crushed to powder as he placed his hands down, it seems my physical power has increased. Significantly at that. Tired of lamenting, instead happy to be alive, he started to climb to his feet, a strange sensation as he seemed to be a little taller, his pants now a little above his ankles, now roughly six feet six inches tall. Slowly, his eyes scanned the area and found his mother's axe, a little scratched and damaged but all good. He began to enjoy this new, dark vision, which allowed him to see clearly in the darkness, the black walls, broken pillars, and eerie patterns on the wall. Ha! Huh. Is this a picture? Raven exclaimed as he stepped closer, one of the paintings not weathered, allowing him to describe the images moderately well. Is this woman? A manticore. The pictures created a strange image, a woman with a tail and large wings greeted a group of what seemed to be humans after she left a pillar. All the humans bowed to her as the sun began to lift high before the picture was dark and gloomy with a vast moon painted. Raven followed the old wall, tracing his fingers across the images that seemed to detail a past, maybe the history of his world or the world manticores first appeared. He watched in awe and sometimes sorrow as the young female manticore began to grow, her wings becoming filled with beautiful griffin dot like feathers, her head adorned with two horns and fluffy antennae like a furry set of feelers that grew down to her buttocks, with a voluptuous and curvy body that could make any man interested. She's beautiful. Somehow his eyes saw a complete image, not the mere images on the wall. As she grew up, experiencing life, and finally fell in love with a human male. At first, the humans began to rejoice, the goddess, Raven labeled her as she seemed to be worshipped by them, and the images showed them piling fruit and treasures for the two who seemed to get married. But it was strange. Why does he look weaker? Frilier with each image. Raven muttered as he walked along the wall before finally coming to the huge brown door with the final image painted on the door. A strange text along the border, while the image of that beautiful woman, holding a child and the male laying in what seemed to be a primitive coffin. While behind her was a massive group of humans with sharp tools and weapons. 
such a sad fate. Raven remembered his mother's words, she seemed to know a manticore personally, likely to be Lilim, who he believed was somehow linked to Lilith, but would never jump the gun, not wanting to hurt Lilith, who seemed to be alone in the world. Manticores will drain the person they love until death. Is this what it means? Not a malicious thing, but naturally. As they spend time together. Is that why my body felt sluggish after riding the bus? Maybe why I sometimes felt too tired after riding the bus late at night with her opposite. It's not her fault. Don't be stupid, Raven. He shook his head, why care about something she didn't do intentionally? His mother said long ago that his constitution quickly recovered and was the ideal partner for essence.absorbing races. Forget it. Let's talk to Lilith seriously once I return and she settles in. Let's take care of her until she's ready, as thanks for the special opportunity and because she's alone in the world like me. Raven's body began to stretch, his muscles feeling more loose and flexible, while a strange sensation of power and vitality almost pumped through his veins. However, he couldn't see himself for a moment, he was worried about a massive scar on his chest and quickly looked down. Eh. What's this? The air stagnated and his body stopped as he looked at the strange marking now painted on his chest, the figure was almost bizarre, but it also felt nostalgic, as if they're from birth. Status Oh, Alistair, Raven, Granbell, oh, Chimera, Manticore slash High Orc, oh, class not applicable oh, Cultivation. The Twelve Gates of Bliss, Manticore only, oh, Cultivation Stage. Gateway of Awakening, Stage 1 oh, Experience. 0 slash 10 o credits 80 attributes average equals 1 strength 3.5 agility 1.5 stamina 5.5 vitality 5.5 intellect 1.6 wisdom 1.7 o skills manticore's heart passive level 1 Increases vitality and stamina regeneration at all times, creating the perfect mate for a female manticore. Shadow Strike, Level 1. Dash towards an enemy and brutalize them with a dark strike causing heavy shadow damage, ignoring defense. 5. Second cooldown stamina.0.5 Wisdom.0.1 Raven's heart began to throb with a powerful vibration, the sound filling his ears, tracing his giant fingers slowly along the image. A male with the same image as himself, with tiny griffin wings, horns and the same feelers the female manticore had in the pictures. But beneath his feet were the crouching and kneeling images of countless female manticores and succubi. It seemed like they were praying to their god, which filled him with an eerie feeling. Let's make sure to cover this up in future. He was worried about the guild seeing his changes, but when he pulled out his adventurer card, the manticore skill and races were gone, leaving only, Shadow Strike, and his race, the old, human-slash-high orc, Chimera. What is that? Thinking of that, what exactly is a manticore? His finger clicked the system interface, and there was a small bestiary. He began to browse the lists, wanting to see the differences between his idea of a manticore, like the images seen here and his mother's words and stories. Manticores A female race known to be extremely dangerous as they constantly drain a male to death, extracting their essence from fluids and scents, and the mere presence can lead to the death of a target without knowing. A vile and deadly type of creature far more dangerous than a succubus. Danger Level SSS No Freedom Wanted Level SSS Kill on sight, arrest if possible There was a big difference between his mind and the knowledge in the system, if all adventurers and ordinary people believed this, then what about the truth? Raven knew they would only latch onto one male in their lifetime, even if it bore no fruit, they would feed from that male alone. How was it as cruel and deadly as the Bureau was claiming? This isn't right. Fucking hell. So annoying. Isn't this too cruel? Lilith isn't a bad girl. Although if it wasn't me. 
the person say she latched onto a normal human male. Wouldn't she be the one who ends up the most unfortunate? She would not only eventually die, but kill the man she dot wait. He wondered if he should bury this subject after losing Phyllis, Raven was not interested in anything like a relationship, especially something as heavy as a manticore's love. Maybe she had yet to bind to him fully. Thus, he could help her stand on her two feet, and she would find the man destined for her. Either way, until she is ready, I won't desert her. Raven shook his head, although he wanted to think about these things seriously, there was too much to do, and the dungeon exit was through this door, not to mention he could no longer tell how long he was inside the dungeon. What if the buses were no longer running? The Twelve Gates of Bliss A Manticore Technique What's cultivation? Is that like the Eastern equivalent to our special arts? He tapped the small text for the Twelve Gates as a long list of words appeared, too much for him to even take in, so he only checked the first gate as this was his current stage. Gateway of Awakening Cultivation Level Foundation Gateway of the Heart Cultivation Level Passion Gateway of the Body Cultivation Level Affection Gateway of the Mind Cultivation Level Desire Gateway of Balance Cultivation Level Equilibrium Gateway of Serenity Cultivation Level Climax Gateway of Harmony Cultivation Level Unity Gateway of Joy Cultivation Level Delight Gateway of Love Cultivation Level Devotion Gateway of Ecstasy Cultivation Level Rapture Gateway of Nirvana Cultivation Level Transcendence Gateway of Endless Bliss Cultivation Level Overwhelming Bliss, The Twelve Gates of Bliss a secret cultivation technique created by the first manticore after losing her beloved and being forced to kill those he loved just by existing, she made this technique and passed it down to all males who paired with a manticore. Although it would twist them into a monstrous chimera, they would not die from their beloved partner's affection and presence. Engaging in sexual intercourse will increase both partners' physical and mental capabilities and increase the other person's pleasure and sensitivity by a certain amount. Sexual pleasure and sensitivity were boosted by 20% for the female partner for each gateway opened. Gateway of Awakening The first step, you have been fused with the inner core of a manticore. Her memories and feelings will eventually guide you in understanding and caring for your partnered manticore. There are six stages to each realm, increased by continued physical contact with any female. Due to the nature of the Twelve Gates of Bliss, the male's libido increases to amounts that even a manticore couldn't handle. Thus it is suggested to find other creatures that desire essences, like higher succubi or dryads. Strength, vitality, and stamina increase drastically with each stage until the second gateway opens, which will focus on vitality entirely. Raven read the details and felt it was terrific, but there was one big problem. He didn't have a class, so he couldn't level up, right? Didn't this mean he would never be able to rank up, unable to bring Lilith into the dungeon to help her find a way to make money? Which caused him to feel a headache as he rubbed through his hair with a frustrated look, reaching for the inner pocket of his jacket for a dragon stick to soothe his nerves, sadly, they were all burned to dust, along with his dad's tunic. Fuck this is too deep. I just wanted a simple class. Can an orc not become a damn warrior in peace? He muttered under his breath, finally entering the last room, his enhanced hearing able to locate four goblins, two with light armor in the distance, the slight movement of the feather on their arrows, letting him know they were archers, with two close to the door, a slight clang of rusty armor, merely a meter from the doorway, blocked by a simple stone ledge. Typical. Archers when I want to rush home. Raven's eyes narrowed, grasping his axe with a tight grip. At the same time, the marking on his chest glowed a faint purple as he stepped into the room with a heavy step, tossing stealth and subtlety out the window as his large foot stepped on the brick wall and leapt over, a shadowy black mist slowly forming as he dropped down. When in doubt, crush them to paste. 
Chapter 1212. Half. Orcs Bliss, you are listening at novel full. Audio. He felt the air pushing against his face as his body plummeted to the ground, his axe held above his head with both hands gripping tight, neither goblin reacting to his sudden jump. Raven's body slammed forward, crushing the left goblin warrior into a thick, green meat paste with a sickening crunch and splatter. Ugh. His hands trembled from feeling the goblin's snapping bones as the hammer edge of his axe crushed the goblin. His body almost bounced up from the momentum of the blow, he saw the goblin warrior to his right turning to face him, its sword lifting as it tried to slash his unguarded flank. Bang! Raven's huge left hand shot out, twisting his body with bulging muscles, crashing into the goblin's face before the sheer power pressed its head against the stone wall behind. He could see its skull visibly squeezing from the power and weight of his body, crushing the goblin as its eyes became bloody and dull. It seemed unaware, almost like he was trapped in a dream, as Raven stabbed the goblin's chest with the spear at the end of his axe's shaft. Whoosh! Raven's ears began to flicker, the sound of the two archers releasing their arrows sounded, able to locate their position with sound as they whistled through the air towards his body. Humph, he grabbed the dying goblin's body, tearing it from the spear's blade. Swoosh. Clutter. His head tilted to the side the moment before the crude arrow with a dark iron tip, seeming to be covered with filthy mess and goop, while his strange plated tail slapped the other arrow from the air, snapping it into pieces and throwing it to the floor. Eh. When did I have a tail? Raven thought momentarily before grabbing the goblin's corpse in his left hand, twisting his body and rushing towards the goblins opposite him. Currently, he was on the ground floor, with a long narrow path blocked by walls on either side, with steps to the exit portal and a second chest straight ahead of him. But on either side of the wall was an elevated platform with archers standing on either side. Creek. He watched as the left side of goblins began to draw their bows, the right side had already fired their first volley and was watching him with their disgusting black eyes filled with puss and filth. Raven disliked their crooked and mocking smiles, brown teeth with broken tusks, lowering his body, he tightened the muscles in his legs, aiming for the readying left archers. Jijijai. He heard an archer from the right side clamor while the left side seemed to feel pressured, their bows shaking visibly as the huge orc approached them. Swoosh. Swoosh. The goblins released their crude arrows, sneaky and evil eyes watching his every movement. However, Raven was calmer than he expected, maybe a side dot effect of becoming a chimera, but he found himself able to reflect and think more clearly. He still felt fear, but the only ideas that dominated his mind were to achieve victory and the method to do so, pain and fear were distant and faint. As he focused his mind, a strange feeling began to form, it was like a fluid that bubbled and surged in his lower body and slowly moved towards his limbs, muscles and organs. Raven could feel a strange power filling his body. The rapidly approaching arrows slowed slightly, allowing him to lean backwards, tighten his left arm's muscles and toss the goblin corpse into their line of sight. Phew! Instantly he began to rush forward, eyes locked onto the platform's edge. He suddenly burst forwards as two arrows smashed into the wall just where he was standing a moment ago, narrowly missing by a hair. His strange power began to skyrocket as black mist forming sharp tendrils began to slither and protrude from his body, wrapping around the axe he held tightly before leaping into the air. Hop. Crunch. Raven's heavy body leapt into the air as the goblin corpse slammed into the archers knocking them back as their quivers rattled, his left hand grasping the ledge, muscles in his arm throbbing, bulging as thick red veins were visible from his almond skin. Fucking, pull through. Feel the burn. He screamed, tossing himself onto the ledge, a slight ache coming from his left shoulder. His body began to spin vertically, with a black flash of light, Raven used, Shadow strike, his axe cleaving both goblins in half. Swish. Stamina.0.5 Wisdom.0.1 The foul shadow energy melted their skin, absorbing their flesh as it passed through their waists, sending their upper bodies and broken bows down onto the lower floor. In contrast, 
their lower halves just bubbled and vanished into a dirty pool of purple slime. Jijijai. Gagaga. Two voices, like laughing, entered his ears, still panting from the attack as he felt more exhausted from this attack with a faint stinging pain in his head. Killed two goblin archers, gained zero EXP gained 40 credits, killed two goblin warriors, gained zero EXP gained 40 credits, ha. Ha. What are these fuckers laughing at? Raven shook his head, limbering his body as he still felt a little pain in his left shoulder, the jump was too far for him to make, there was no cover and more than 300 meters to sprint to the platform's end. Fuck. He looked at his mother's axe, the damaged blade and glinting metal that shone in the dark torchlight. Then his eyes looked at the goblins, mocking him as their bows were almost fully drawn, the oozing crude arrows pointing towards him. Mother, forgive thine son, for thou art about to sin. Step. Raven stepped back, the bows now fully drawn, his eyes narrowed, twisting his body like a long dot distance thrower, holding the axe with both hands and his waist. Step. 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 A slow run dot up, followed by rapid steps as his body began to release the heavy axe, his neck, arms and chest all tense with his muscles bulging and used to the maximum as he lunged forward, tossing his mother's axe, which began to hurl through the air rapidly, spinning like a ripsaw through the air with a deep, violent howl. Whoosh! Ugh! Raven couldn't afford to dodge, the axe, like a chainsaw, tore into the bodies of the goblins, both of them too stupid to stand apart as his mother's axe ripped them apart, with the momentum too strong, it smashed into the wall with bright sparks, penetrating the stone like it was soft flesh and hanging in the air as the shaft wobbled. Meanwhile, a crude arrow penetrated his left shoulder, the wound instantly burning and stinging like hell as he felt a throbbing sensation when the sticky tip pierced him. Fucking goblins! He cried out as the other arrow crashed into the ground near his feet, luckily missing as the wooden arrow clattered and snapped in the distance. Killed two goblin archers, gained zero EXP gained 40 credits the last message caused his body to slump to the ground, combat was finally over, yet he still had to rush over to the other pillar, his mother's axe now half penetrating the stone walls of the dungeon. She would kick my ass for sure. With heavy breaths, Raven took a moment to rest, sitting on the edge of the platform, his eyes wandering the bright room thanks to his dark vision, while checking the total gains so far, his heart feeling a sense of delight and joy. He looked at the arrow inside his shoulder, thick blood oozing from the wound, causing him to grimace in pain and irritation. Do I have to remove it? So troublesome. Grasping the arrow with his right hand, he twisted the arrow with a snap, Raven wasn't taught how to remove arrows, likely because his mother didn't consider them an issue, as her skin could take a blade and would be fine. Ugh. He sighed in pain as blood began to pool from his arm. A thick and disgusting smell of rotting flesh caused him to panic, looking at his shoulder, though, he was stunned. A pool of vile blood formed at his feet, bubbling and stinking of decaying flesh, which began sizzling on the stone flooring but his arm was completely different. The almond skin and red flesh began to heal the moment the arrow was removed rapidly, all the disgusting black blood and infection were spewed out, like his body rejected the venom and filth, rapidly healing before his eyes until the skin was soft and smooth like he'd never been shot. Strange. But cool. Raven thought, slowly making his way through the dungeon's empty room, collecting his mother's axe, now with a few more scratches along the blade, the hammer also with a blunted part that needed maintenance. Raven was a little irritated about it costing money, but since it was his mother's, why not take care of it until he could afford his custom weapon? He walked towards the treasure chest, his eyes watching for surprise attacks or hidden secret monsters. I wonder what's in this chest. But hey! Another mural. Is it the same manticore one? Hmm no, she looks similar, but it's different. Suddenly Raven focused all his attention on the wall, starting from the far left, as he traced along the slightly weathered and more gloomy tail painted onto the walls, which caused him to feel a sense of sadness. 
killing her captor's abs and escaping into the darkness a second, more brutal type of manticore. Unlike the previous mural, where the female manticore was welcomed like a goddess, this one showed her being captured, tortured, and experiencing hell as she slowly weakened, unable to drain any essence. Raven somehow could feel a connection to this woman, he felt sorrow for her plight, the despair he imagined she might feel. The images seemed to pass the time, her hair was short in the first image, now down to her ankles, but mottled and filled with knots. Slowly it seemed she became dull to the pain and suffering she endured until the third row of images showed a huge picture of her face close up, with an eerie smile. The following pictures below were of her using the drain ability that manticores usually used on one partner, but she was using it on all around her, draining them to death with a twisted smile on her lips. The final image was another close-up of the manticore surrounded by darkness, her golden eyes and sharp white teeth the only color visible. Raven felt he could feel her watching his movements, like a snake, she hid in the darkness as before his very eyes, the final image started to grow distant. Her figure vanished into the darkness. Only the words. I've waited for you for so long. My precious hero, come to save me. Now visible in large writing. Immediately, the dungeon shook slightly before the black chest he had avoided opened, slamming the lid open just like before, a strange gemstone hovered, the pattern different, and the color was black, not purple. Oh shit. Here we go again. Raven mumbled, preparing to catch the stone as it shot towards him. If the nice inheritance was so violent then this one. Won't I die for real? But his fear was betrayed, the black stone with a broken heart and the sorrowful figure of the manticore that vanished into darkness as a young girl painted in the center floated towards him gently. Eh. What's going on? He thought, confused by the utter difference in events. Its cold surface began to stroke along his flesh, from his abs to his muscular arms around his body like a lover separated from her beloved for a long dot long time. Raven's mind stopped him from swatting it away, sending danger signals if he rejected it or treated this stone like the villagers did the female. Finally, after it seemed to have touched his entire body, the strange sensation left his skin feeling smoother and tingling but not unpleasant. The black stone seemed to have a faint pink glow, only the slightest pink on the image of the young girl, but it was there. Like a cloud, the stone fluttered over to his face before hovering close to his lips, the eyes of the woman on the large stone looking into his. Brilliant gold met neon blue. Raven stared at the stone for what felt like hours, his body began to feel hot, not a bad sensation, but it was like his entire body was seeking this stone, may be related to the precious stone. He couldn't be sure, but a lapse in his mind and thoughts caused him to lean forward, kissing the stone gently, a strange sensation filled him. It was like kissing a real woman's lips. After his kiss, the stone began to melt into a sweet, black fluid. He felt it was similar to strawberry or raspberry as it entered his mouth, gently permeating through his body, as Raven felt only warmth, a sense of rapture as if every inch of his body began to feel complete. He did not fall unconscious this time, he felt more aware and awake as the sudden voice sounded in his mind, like when killing monsters. Accepted the forsaken manticore's last wish, huh? When did I do that? What, someone, hey? The Twelve Gates of Bliss has been completed and restored to its true name. The Twelve Gates of Blissful Domination, boy. Why does it sound so eerie and evil now? Dot. Raven was left silent as his body felt pleasant like his muscles were massaged by an eastern lady walking along his back. It feels kinda nice. Lower. Crack my lower back. The pleasant cracking of his spine caused him to let out grunts, forced to sit on the weathered throne beside the pedestal as the changes in his body seemed to take a little longer. Damn. Who is that woman? Does that mean the bureau wasn't wrong? And they are looking for that manticore. Not Liltha's bloodline. He tried to think deeper, but the pleasant feeling overwhelmed him, almost close to causing him to experience his first climax outside of sexual intercourse. Chapter 1313 
half orc visits brothel. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Crack. Raven's body suddenly shuddered, waking him from his light slumber as the changes were complete. They were not as significant as the first part of his cultivation technique, but some parts made him feel a little lacking and incomplete. His muscles now felt more durable and stronger, while Raven's thoughts and mind became clearer and more agile when thinking, somehow feeling he would be at least three times more effective in his old job in sales. Wow. I feel so good. Raven stood from the now completely ruined throne, covered in a filthy black slime, the remains of his almond skin, which began to peel halfway through in his hair. Am I bald now? Quickly he began to stroke his head in panic, only to find his hair was now shorter, silkier and felt like a bunny rabbit's soft fur. He picked up his mother's axe, looking at the reflection, feeling rather surprised as his look seemed to have improved at least 20 points, if he was a 62 before entering the dungeon, he was now an easy 85 out of 100. It's now only down to my neck, huh? A little wild, but handsome. Raven began to speak to himself, looking at his new, more manly, wild look in the axe's reflection, shaking his head to the side as it flowed like feathers. Let's head out, although I am sure that creepy woman will show up one day. The feeling she gave me wasn't danger or anger, but a lonely and longing feeling. Raven stood up from his seat, walking towards the blue portal, but with each step, he could feel his heart and blood pumping faster, the speed and power accelerating like he was in the middle of combat, with adrenaline starting to build up. At first, he thought this was a heart attack or something and began to worry as he entered the portal, preparing for that disgusting feeling. Whoosh! However, he was fine, this time, when he passed through the portal, there was no discomfort or nausea, Raven found himself in the dark streets of Arcadia City, the biggest shithole in the Franklin Federation. HMMN. What's the time? Let's see my current state. Ba dot dump, still, he felt that strange urge and powerful feeling in his body, but Raven couldn't tell what caused it, thankfully, Emily's card would show a person's basic state after they visited a dungeon to avoid deaths from curses, poison and the like. Something about the Bureau's adventurer card needed to absorb the dungeon's mana to activate fully or something. It said. Raven walked and looked around. To his left was the dilapidated bus stop, with litter and a broken bin rolling on the ground, his right was a road that would lead to the business district, and he had no plan going there, especially with his chest so strange. The path ahead would lead to Arcadia's night area, filled with bars, clubs, casinos, and the Red Dot Light District, but the closest hospital would be in that direction if he needed to be detoxified or remove the curse. The nearest hospital would be Langfield. About 20 minutes on the bus or a 30-minute jog straight forward. Rummaging through his item ring, he finally found the elusive card that seemed slightly different from before, now a black and purple color with white text. O, oh, Alistair, Raven, Granbell O, oh, Chimera, Manticore slash High Orc, O, oh, Class Not Applicable O, oh, Cultivation. The Twelve Gates of Blissful Domination, Alistair Granbell Only, O, oh, Cultivation Stage. Gateway of Awakening, Stage 1 O, Experience. 0 slash 10 O, Credits. 200 Attributes, Average equals 1, Strength. 3.5 Agility. 1.5 Stamina. 5.5 Vitality. 5.5 Intellect. 2.4 Wisdom. 2.2 O, Skills. Manticore's Heart, Passive, Level 1. Increases vitality and stamina regeneration at all times, creating the perfect mate for a female manticore. Shadow Strike, Level 1. Dash towards an enemy and brutalize them with a dark strike causing heavy shadow damage, ignoring defense. It's just like the woman said. The skills related to the manticore race and his changes were hidden completely, but he could see them, like those weird hologram things on kids' cereal boxes. If he tilted the card in a strange language, the rest of his status was visible. Well, at least my intellect and wisdom increased, that helps a lot, huh? Sure hope it's only visible to me. 
Otherwise, that would be awkward to show Emily. He flipped the card to the back, showing his picture, basic information and current status. The moment he thought about that beautiful dryad who made his card, the blood and feeling in his body grew more restless, and slowly his mind began to realize what this might be, the tight feeling in his chest. Raven, class. Not applicable, status. Dangerously aroused, libido boosted, shit. Raven had noticed the information about his changes but thought it would be something he could solve with his hand and special action movies for adult men. Ba dot dump, his heart throbbed again as a strange pain formed in his body while his nose began to pick up the scent of females in the distance, this technique was inborn for an orc, but they could filter it out and focus on their daily lives. Yet now, it was unfiltered as the mass scent of females in the night district flowed towards him like a euphoric aroma. Fuck. He needed a solution, as his bloodshot eyes looked upwards to see that sign from earlier about the woman who only charged 30 credits for a, unforgettable, night. I have credits, so this is the only choice without a lover. With a deep breath, he tried to control his heart and hold back his lust, the tight feeling in his pants couldn't be fixed as he tried to tuck it between his legs, only making his orsish erection more prominent and visible. He walked down the road for more than ten minutes before reaching the night district, a place of free reign for chaos, normally flooded with crime, drugs and girls. So for Raven right now, it was paradise, even as he was. He had a little taste and class, wanting to pick one of the more up-dot-class and expensive places with clean girls to avoid any illnesses or issues. There were several C.class brothels, while only a handful of B.class and above existed. The one he wished to try was famous for its monster girls and exotic races, because of an accident in his youth during high school, he was scared to sleep with a human woman, the trauma from those days still in the back of his mind. His eyes focused on one building with an elegant and sleek dot styled building in the heart of the red dot light district, it was neither a small building nor huge, but snugly fit in its corner with a surrounding walled dot off garden and bar for waiting for customers. The building was quite tall and made of eastern dot style architecture, which caused many to feel a sense of wonder when choosing this brothel. Raven's heart began to swell with excitement at the thought of sleeping with a monster or exotic race for the first time, having only tasted humans, elves and other orcs since reaching puberty. Above the entrance was a charming and cute sign with a fox with nine tails sleeping on a silver moon, most wouldn't expect this to be a brothel but rather a normal inn because it lacked the feeling of one before you entered. Raven noted the discreet entrance, with a small sign indicating the establishment's name. Its name was, The Ardent Fox, he looked around, a little shy about entering one of these places for the first time, normally, his company workers would all visit the night district together, but as he wasn't single and an orc, they tended not to invite him. One once joked, if we bring your orc-sized cock, won't the girls ignore our sausages? A new nostalgic memory for Raven. Excuse me, are you alright, dear customer? Would you like me to help you inside? Suddenly a soft but charming voice sounded. The girl couldn't be more than 18 or 19, Raven turned around to see a cute female fox, her face was like an apple, with cute cheeks and dark red eyes, with ashen blonde hair tied in a ponytail. Her head only came to his robust chest as he saw her looking towards his lower body several times with a light chuckle. She's so cute, but a little too small. He wanted to sleep with her, that was his instinct and feeling when he saw her face as if his cultivation would make great progress if he slept with her. No. I won't sleep with women to further my power. First let's make sure it benefits the other woman first. Then. After I know this girl, I'll buy her for an entire night. No, a weekend. The girl didn't say anything more, her delicate hands grasping Raven's fingers as they were so much larger than hers, and she began to pull him inside, her single tail was golden and fluffy. Raven merely watched her swaying rear and tail moving like an enchanting dance. Upon entering the building, Raven was greeted by a spacious and modern lobby, nothing like the dated wooden and eastern exterior, it caused him great shock. 
The decor was luxurious, with plush seating and artwork on the walls, with dim lighting giving the space a sophisticated and intimate feel. Here, there was no need to be so nervous, handsome Mr. Ork. Exclaimed the fox as she wrapped around his body, entering behind the desk and like a cute receptionist, she grasped the magi pad, which contained pictures and videos of beautiful women of different races. She slid it across the wooden counter towards him like a cute receptionist, seeing her action, Raven approached the reception desk as the fox greeted him with a smile. He looked to his right, a thin but silky curtain seemed to block the main area of the brothel from the lobby, as he took the book into his hands, he listened to the fox girl little humming, which seemed a little dated, something his mother would sing or hum. Still, he ignored it and thought it would be some of the older women's taste. The book also showed the types of rooms and choices you could make for an extra cost, with the plush rooms decorated in different styles, luxurious furnishings, soft lighting, and high dot-end finishes. Raven appreciated the privacy and discretion the rooms offered. He felt at ease in the comfortable and accommodating environment. A moment later, he began to narrow the choices between a cute rabbit girl with a large rear and white hair, a tall minotaur with massive everything and cute brown hair down to her ass and finally, a troll with pale blue skin, pretty tusks and the gentle pink hair in a high ponytail. Although the Lamia looked tasty, she was a bit out of his current budget and only did long appointments of 2.3 days. Suddenly a pair of female foxes appeared with dark brown hair. They offered to take his jacket and brought a small glass of eastern wine while gently massaging his free hand while he finally made his choice. Pressing the button, he selected Miriam, 35, the Minotaur. She was a soft and kind woman, but it was listed she was durable, but was said to be unfeeling and struggled to feel pleasure, thus, her price was lowered to 100 credits for one night. Still more expensive than the troll and rabbit, but he wanted to test the power of the sensitivity and pleasure increase with her first. He enjoyed the feeling of the luxurious and sophisticated surroundings that left him feeling pampered and cared for and knowing the establishment's focus on creating a comfortable and welcoming environment for its clients wasn't just for show. Raven grasped the small cup of wine, drinking it slowly, as with the etiquette, even if he felt he needed more. He put his wrist over the digital device on the reception desk that pinged, showing the total value of his choice, while he upgraded it to overtime for a total of 130 credits. Ping. Pong. The transaction went through, the female fox still watching with a slight smile. Miriam should be here soon, take a seat, and how about your chat with me for a little while? Mr. Raven. Sure, no problem, thanks for guiding and serving me. He responded with a polite smile filled with the warmth of the wine. My name is Miyu if you come here, always ask me to serve you, and maybe you'll get a discount someday. Fufu dot. Well, I will do so, it would be nice to choose you as my partner in the future when you grow, though, haha. <laughs> Raven joked, a little jolly from the wine. He felt a little embarrassed to hit on such a young woman and looked away at some of the art, missing the sharp glance from Miyu as she once again looked at his expanded lower body, licking her lips in silence. Chapter 1414 Miriam The Frigid Minotaur You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Be warned, our 18 is incoming, and it's long and detailed. If I fucked you, you'd be sucked dry both body and soul. The cute blonde fox whispered as she watched him walk towards the waiting area while Miriam made her way to meet him, her tail increasing slowly as he moved out of view until nine were visible. Her figure became more voluptuous and alluring as her almond eyes became a seductive shade of emerald, her curvy hips shaking with each step as she entered the door labeled, Madam, quietly. Did you hear that handsome orc guest? One of the brunette foxes whispered as she took over the duties at the desk, her little tail swaying with excitement. I know. How stupid, normally, the guy would have been killed on the spot. Do you think it's because orc dicks are huge despite the males being so rare? The younger girl with a bob haircut gossiped as her brown tail began to entangle and slap the other girl playfully. Let's get to work, you don't want to give oral to a fat old man for your essence this month, right? 
the brunette with a ponytail whispered. Ah. That's the worst, it tastes like sour milk. My hair and skin is all greasy and disgusting for days. Please. Don't tell Madame Miyako. The two foxes then began to gossip and arrange the desk. Normally, this store only took clients via appointment, only when the madam found someone interesting could they bypass this rule. Either way, the madam is probably going to punish him, the list she showed him was all the women who do this for debt or income and are frigid or unfeeling right. Ha <laughs> ha. Miriam is a pitiful woman, not only is her body big so the cocks of our guests rarely reach past her entrance, never mind her depths, but even her clit and G. Spot are said to have dulled nerves. The Bob Fox chirped as she saw the beautiful woman approaching the new customer. Hey. Hey. Shall we watch? Both girls said to each other, touching a hidden monitor on the front desk, sitting beside each other, the elegant room was currently empty, but soon they would see a genuine orc cock. Exciting both of the cute fox girls who served Raven's drink. Hey, Miri. Didn't that guest smell nice and have a powerful scent of vitality? Riri. I thought so too, that's why I massaged him. The vitality was so pure and refined, I almost came. Hee hee, don't tell madam. Raven sat on the black sofa, his lower back feeling extremely comfortable with expensive soft leather that seemed padded with feathers or something even softer. He tiled the last sip of the eastern wine down his gullet, the warm burn now felt good as he adjusted to the taste. His hands swayed the empty crystal glass, a beautiful light reflecting from the lights above and the small atmospheric candles around the room. I can't believe I came to a place like this, Miriam Ha. Huh? Thirty-five years old, a single mother. Feels like a dirty animation plot where she gets blackmailed by some ugly old man and succumbs to pleasure. Step. A gentle sound, the light murmur of someone's feet touching the soft black carpet, her movements neither hasty nor too slow, swaying her wide hips, the gentle stir of her enormous breasts capturing the eager gaze of Raven, who glanced up at the sound. Excuse me, handsome sir, might you be Mr. Raven, who requested me? His ears flickered, her tone was gentle and comforting, like a mother speaking to her children. He appreciated her soothing voice and began looking at her beautiful figure, she was almost taller than him, with a curvy and charming body. Dot Miriam wore a thin silk kimono with black and white colors, the cloth was cut to show her deep cleavage and beautiful almond skin with a shiny glow. Her legs wore a pair of sexy black stockings that peeked from under the slit of her loosely fastened kimono, a thin white nightgown underneath. Sorry, yes, it's me, I am Raven. Please forgive me for staring too long, I never expected you to be more beautiful than the image. Fufu what a charming customer, normally they say I have amazing tits or a fat ass, are they to your liking, my handsome orc customer? Miriam's voice stayed soft and gentle, but there was a sultry tone as she opened the upper half of her kimono to show her wondrous tits. She gave them a jiggle for him to enjoy, her face always with a faint smile before turning around every movement she made almost calculated to increase his desire as she lifted the cloth slowly. The sound of fabric brushing against her beautiful brown ass, slowly revealing her perfect rear, no blemishes or marks, soft enough to sink your hands and face into, her hips swaying to allow him to see it wobble, pushing her hips close enough that even her feminine scent began to fill his nose. I want to fuck this woman. I need to press her down. Raven's thoughts were dominated by lust, but only for a moment, he was not some virgin teenager, instead remembering the information and reason he chose this place. She is said to be unable to feel any pleasure and is frigid. I am here to examine my ability, not just to nut inside this woman. His struggle was hard, as the woman's scent and fleshy ass just inches from his face, the warmth and droplets of sweat so close he could taste them which increased his libido rapidly as any man would, the raging erection in his pants was not a joke. Raven started to take deep breaths, almost grabbing this woman and throwing her down on the couch, his eyes bloodshot as the manticore bloodline drove his body crazy, while Miriam turned around with a cute pivot and looked down between his legs, with a strange smile. Oh my! 
your big friend looks tight, almost ready to burst from your pants. Shall we continue this upstairs, dear customer? Raven's mind was racing, trying to think of something to say, but he could only nod and follow her up the stairs. Dot theta m as they ascended the stairs, Raven noticed that most other women in the building were dressed similarly to Miriam, wearing only a thin layer of cloth over their breasts and stomachs. The women were mostly young and attractive, and Raven couldn't help but notice several of them staring at him as he followed the older woman, but none of them seemed to approach him. Are you sure you don't wish for a younger girl? I can only offer you my huge tits and ass, the rest of me is a mother, you know. I won't be as tight as those small elves or as flexible as the beast girls who just gave you an okay signal. I chose you because I wanted you the most. Raven's lust caused him to be honest and blunt, he looked her in the eye and noticed a slight blush, whether genuine or not, he didn't mind, only waiting for her to open the door labeled 35. He found the number amusing as her age and door were the same, the giggle not escaping Miriam as she noticed him glancing between her and the door, faking a pout. Fufu are you laughing at the number matching my age? Don't be cheeky now, or I might dot just dot bite. With that, she pushed open the door and entered first. Raven followed her inside, noticing a long hallway with doors lining both sides. As he stepped in, he was greeted by a beautiful room with an eastern interior with high dot quality wood, a glossy and tasteful finish, with beautiful eastern artwork along the white walls. There was a large bed in the middle, with massive windows showing the city view from all directions, it was like magic how they managed to make the night district look so beautiful from this floor. He noticed the room was empty except for a chair beside the wall near the entrance. It was a simple wooden chair, but the cushion and material were a rich blue, and the legs were carved out of black marble. There was also a low table, which had a glass of wine on it, and a plate of fruits and nuts. A classy setup, but I'm not here for the ambience, Raven thought. Miriam walked towards the bed and sat down, placing her feet on the ground and looking up at him. Now then, let us begin. Raven removed his jacket, enjoying the woman watching as he exposed his muscular body, he watched her reactions as she seemed to like seeing a hot male sitting opposite her with tight, well-dot-trained muscles and a bulky frame. He sat on the blue chair, eyes looking at the beautiful mother opposite him, her mature beauty causing his blood to surge, even without his changes, Raven was confident this woman could get him in the mood just from her movements alone. How should I call you, dear customer? Do you have any requests? Chapter 1515 Exploring Miriam, R18, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Call me Raven. Very well, Raven. Now, what shall we do next, you're going to strip for me, aren't you? Yes, I am. But first, I will ask you a few questions. If you answer honestly, I promise I'll give you the best time of your life. Raven nodded, sipping his wine and letting his gaze wander over the woman's body. What do you want to know? Do you prefer a woman who is more submissive or one who takes charge? Submissive, when possible. I love to dominate and like to be in control too. Why is that? It's fun to see how much a woman can take, and it makes me feel good knowing I'm making someone else happy. That way, I won't feel bad about my desires being satisfied. A gentle mist filled the room, he didn't notice when she lit the aroma candle as the scent of lavender and vanilla essence filled the room, soothing and relaxing his mind. Then, if I may ask, why did you choose me? Because you are beautiful. His eyes and voice were completely honest, she couldn't detect a hint of falsity in his words, even with the, ever-truth candles, used by this brothel to ensure customers won't harm the girls. And you are handsome, Raven. You have a strong aura, and I want to please you. I am also curious why you chose me, although I suppose you will be disappointed with my insensitive and frigid body. Miriam's tall body, nearly six feet five inches tall, her cute cow horns and soft ears fluttering as she slowly removed her kimono, her pink lips parting as she sighed. Thank you for calling me beautiful, it made me very happy, it's not often I get called anything so wholesome before or after sex. 
The woman's breasts were magnificent, soft and plump with large nipples, her neat pussy hidden behind a thick bush of dark brown hair. Her skin was smooth and flawless, with a faint golden glow to her cheeks and neck. Raven's cock twitched in his pants as he stared at the woman, his eyes never leaving her face. He knew that sometimes it was better to let his body and reaction speak for him. After taking another sip of wine, he stood up and approached the bed, eyes watching the subtle body of Miriam as she moved closer towards him, stroking his firm muscles, a hot sigh leaving her lips, her hand slipping under the hem of his shirt. Her touch excited him further than he expected. They touched softly but firmly as each rubbed their hands across the other's chest, her fingers sliding along his chest. She went deeper to caress his pecs beneath the fabric, the animal instincts within stirred ravenously, forcing his member harder and longer against the zipper. By the third pass around her torso, his breath came faster, his tantalizingly filled her nostrils, helping intensify his arousal, which heightened Miriam's excitement allowing her to squeeze tightly onto the bulge in his trousers. Damn, this creature has balls, she thought to herself. She closed her eyelids briefly and enjoyed feeling such intense heat coming from within as he pressed himself firmly into the palm of her hand. When their arms met again, they hugged gently and slid apart slightly, soon though, Raven cupped a breast in either palm, squeezing lightly, licking his lips as he admired its size, wanting desperately to suckle upon it. I don't normally allow this, but. Miriam's voice sounded as she drank a mouthful of the warm wine with hints of berries and dark chocolate. Wine spilt down Miriam's chin as she leaned in towards him, pressing her soft lips against his, the warmth and slight taste of wine on her breath, a sweet highlight to the Minotaur's kiss, sending waves of sensations through his body. A giant slimy tongue and slight bumps slithered around hers, tasting the sweetness left behind gripping tight around her shoulders as if lost in her kiss. Something caught Miriam off guard. Her tongue lashing back at him, wrapping itself around and thrusting upwards as she kissed him aggressively. After removing her lips from his muzzle, Miriam laughed, smiling as the orc as they both began to pant slightly, Miriam leaned against his chest, her cheeks pressing against his. Her hand skillfully unbuckled his belt and zipper as the hot, heavy mass pressed against his black boxers, the almond flesh visible from the stretched buttons, the smell of freshness wafting through the air. Oh my, your cock. It's huge. Fufu I want to taste it. Miriam whispered into his ears, her fingers opening the buttons of his boxers as they flopped out, the meaty mass thicker than her forearm, and like the orcs in female dot aimed smut novels, they were hung like horses. Butterflies floated inside Miriam's belly, releasing tension inside as she felt the object of his attention enter her senses once more, nothing beat giving pleasure to others because she couldn't feel anything, it always felt good to see their pleased faces. At least. Mouth agape, Raven's lips parted to release a heated gasp as Miriam released his growing shaft, pulling down his black boxers as they slipped down with his pants, kissing him with light pecks as they moved towards the bed, pressing against each other. Miriam now climbed between his legs, her huge breasts pressed together, growing almost an entire cup, while she looked towards him like a goblin, showing just how long and flexible her tongue was. She wrapped her smooth palms around his rigid length, holding his throbbing cock upright, leaning in and pressing her tongue tip to where the head met, lapping up his precum from the slit with just enough pressure to cause him to twitch violently with desire. MMPH it's so different, your precum tastes like a salty caramel, fufu, this cow might just get addicted to the taste, will it make my milk caramel favor? Her long tongue, coated in her thick drool, began to slither along his cock, pulsing with anticipation. She pressed the base of her tongue under his shaft, her lips slowly enveloping the thick tip, gently kissing his cock with wet smacks, pulling back with a pop as she began to spit her drool down her tongue coating the girthy head, now smeared in her saliva. Well, you better swallow my entire load and let me taste your milk to find out Miriam, keep kissing the tip with your beautiful lips, it's so sexy, use your tongue to please my shaft. Nnnnm Chu you want me to kiss your cock? Fufu okay then, Raven, enjoy my soft lips as I taste your fat cock oozing with precum from my gentle blowjob.
Miriam placed her right hand on the side of his hips as she spoke, pushing them forward ever so slightly, rubbing her thumb against his sensitive glands, stimulating him intensely. His breathing grew heavier as she continued to lick the underside of his cock, gazing deep into his eyes as she sucked lovingly on his tip, her lips slightly wrapping around his glands. The sloppy and wet sounds coming from her drool as it bubbled from her lips as she pulled up with a lewd pop, breathing a hot sigh against his dark tip, moaning quietly as she tasted his salty sweetness, it wasn't something she would usually at work, but there was no doubt that this man was a little special. You can suck it now, but I want you to sit on my face, let me see that beautiful pussy up close. Eh. But. I know. I want to taste you like you are tasting me, Miriam. With that said, Raven pushed her backwards, lifting her ass off the bed, her thick thighs slowly lifting over his head, her warmth and musky scent filling his powerful orc nose, despite her not feeling pleasure physically. Her slit still had a slight amount of honey, the scent was thick and more intense than he was used to, but it entered his mind like an aphrodisiac, spreading open her thighs wide, exposing her neatly trimmed pubic hairs, the delicate folds of her vulva revealed, he wanted to devour every inch of her body. As her pussy was opened by his skilled fingers, his massive erection jutted forwards, Miriam reached for the bottle of sweet, honey-flavored lubricant as he wrote he liked wet and sloppy gagging sounds during oral, and poured some onto his hard member, using her fingertips to spread it all over his shaft. Splutter. Squelch. MMMPH good. Tasty cock. NNNNMMM. Let mommy savor your throbbing shaft, foo foo. The sound of his cock being caressed filled the room, Miriam began to lick along his shaft, following her fingers as she dabbed and slithered along his veins, enjoying the feeling of their throbbing against her warm tongue. These sensations sent shivers throughout his body, causing him to groan loudly as she took him deep into her throat sucking gently on his swollen crown, drawing forth a loud moan from Raven. He gripped the side of her soft ass, his left hand almost sinking fully inside, as a strange feeling began to flow inside his body, it wasn't lust but something akin to blood, strange blood that flowed from his abdomen, flowing faster as he felt Miriam's hot lips sliding down his sticky shaft, her loud slurping not only arousing him but causing that strange feeling to surge. The moment he pressed his tongue to her slit, the power inside him began to surge from his tongue and entered her body, his eyes could see this strange energy as it danced around her pelvis, teased the area of her clit with a dull purple color, slowly flowing up her back and down through the lips and back into his cock, the energy leaving his body was a dark purple, close to black. However, the color was light pink when it re-entered through the tip of his member. Chapter 1616 Miriam's first. R18, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Her mouth was filled with a burning heat, the honey taste mixing with his salty caramel well, Miriam loved sweat things as her lips began to slide lower, her foamy spittle now bubbling around her lips as she felt the thick tip of his glands pushing out her throat. She felt comfortable reaching halfway, now licking the underside of his glands, teasing the soft part of his helmet that linked to the main shaft, with a splutter, her nose bubbled slightly, causing her to almost cough from the sudden thrusting of his hips. MNNGHH Gubu. Slurp. NGHH Pe. So big fufu, MNGH Dua. His cock tastes good, but my throat is being used like a mere sex toy. The thrust is too powerful. She felt his cock pushing deep past her tonsils and almost fucking her throat rather than her face, as she narrowed her eyes, enjoying the friction of his meat club thrashing in her throat as she began to gag and spew excess drool from her lips, her cheeks swelling as Miriam began to cough, pulling up his shaft as she slurped roughly, all the slimy spit and drool was sucked back into her mouth. Suddenly, she felt a strange feeling. It was dull but caused her lower back to tingle, her legs above Raven's face began to tighten, strange. What was that? She thought to herself before the dulled sensation of his tongue sliding along her slit became clearer, the cock in her mouth naturally slipped out with a wet pop, the drool and pre-cum oozing down her cheek as she breathed heavier. Hada what on? 
Her body jutted, the sensation when his lips wrapped around her clitoris and began to suck gently. In contrast, his tongue, like an octopus, began to smear and slip around her rapidly with strange movements causing her lower body to feel the tinge of feeling once again, out of mere instinct as he kissed her pussy, sliding his tongue along her slit, teasing her clit, she took his tip into her mouth, passionately entangling his glands and soft spongy top with her warm tongue and soft lips. Strange. The doctor said it was impossible. It feels good. I want him to be rougher. It's still too dull. The more she tried to force something inside her mind, the less real those thoughts were becoming, leaving only lustful feelings for this man who had just entered her life. Her hands slid over his thighs, gripping tightly onto his muscular ass as she pulled on him, trying to pull away from his sucking mouth, yet she found no strength within her limbs or willpower. He continued to lick her folds, making sure not to go near her throbbing nub, instead focusing solely on stimulating the sensitive area between her inner labia and opening. His fingers moved faster against her gash, spreading her open and rubbing her insides while his tongue lapped at her swollen bud, sending waves of bliss through her entire body. Hmm, on. Lick my clit, lick my clit please. A sharp moan escaped Miriam's lips as she arched her back buckling under the intense stimulation, her head rolling back as if she wanted to escape his oral assault. Sadly there was nowhere else to run, even though she didn't know where to look, her eyelids fluttering shut as she lost control, the strange pleasure washing over her, her muscles tightening as they quivered, her toes curling as she felt something building up inside her abdomen, her lips and mouth began to kiss the tip of his cock, sliding down, struggling to focus as she moaned onto his shaft. The power in her hips failing as she dropped her plump ass onto his face, Miriam thought this might stop his canilingus. Eh. He's moving faster. What is this strange tongue movement? Oh God. Mmmmen, gubu fuck. She was forced to curse as her body wouldn't listen to her, violent vibrations and jolts now building up around her body, like she was shocked by an eel or something. Only able to suck his cock to get revenge, she could do nothing except let him have his way with her, her arms falling limply to either side, her heavy breasts bouncing lightly as she rode his face, moaning loudly as she began to gush, her juices flowing freely from her vagina, coating his chin and neck, dribbling down his chest as she shuddered violently. Oh God. Wa.ug, m, hm, nngh. Her mind went blank like her body was lost in space, weightless before it came hurling down to earth, filling her abdomen with butterflies as they began to rage before they all flew away, spreading to every part of her body and causing her to spasm and howl like a wild beast, unable even to control her voice, tears or breath as her heart raced. I'm going to die. It feels so good, but I'm dying. I'm falling. Save me. Help. Ah.so uh, comfortable.yes.more.so wonderful. Miriam's first orgasm finally crashed upon her, her whole body shaking uncontrollably, her breathing ragged and rapid, her stomach clenching and repeatedly releasing, each time triggering another wave of ecstasy throughout her body. Her pelvis trembling as she came harder than ever before, her climax lasting longer than anything she'd experienced since puberty, her belly tensing and contracting as she screamed incoherently, her voice echoing off the room's walls. Raven wasn't sure how long had passed since that first climax, his face and tongue now slightly numb, a sticky flood covering his chin and face as it seemed the old girl had plenty of sensation inside her. It was merely an issue with her body. The energy he sent into her continually finally unblocked that strange blockage, and thus Miriam, the 35. Year. Old mother, became ravenous, her hips thrusting and rubbing against his face, almost crushing his skull as she enjoyed the face sitting position too much, her hand constantly teasing his cock, no letting him reach orgasm, but edging him as she experienced this new bliss for almost an hour. Splutter. Suddenly the beautiful brown ass lifted from his face, a sense of cold blowing along his face as the sticky love juices began to dry. With a thud, Miriam's exhausted body rolled onto the bed, with a strange but blissful face, her cheeks and skin was silky, shimmering and looked at least a year younger, 
before tasting his sperm. Ha! Sorry. I am meant to be serving you. Ha! My legs won't move. Shall I ask for a refund? Miriam's soft eyes looked towards him, her belly against the bed, with her but slightly elevated, shaking with her deep breaths. It's enough, right? I now know that strange technique boosts their energy and increases sensitivity and can also fix medical issues related to a woman's body. I can fuck her as I want now, right? I booked you all night, right? His deep voice sounded a little hoarse from spending so long going down on her, leaning to the side of the bed, where a desk full of drinks was prepared in a silver ice bucket. Snap! He opened a bottle of fizzy water, necking the bottle in seconds, leaving about 600 milliliters and taking some in his mouth as he crawled towards the exhausted minotaur, whose body looked extremely sexy with the layer of silky sweat, the beads dripping down her ass cheeks causing his sticky cock to throb the veins practically popping out as he was yet to come once. Open your mouth, Miriam. Hahn. <laughs> the cute woman opened it without question, her mind still in a wonderful state, filled with bliss and delight. Raven covered her open mouth as he kissed her, giving her some of the water as hydration so she didn't get sick, he pulled away for a moment after she drank a mouthful, at first just wanting to pass her water, but she suddenly begged him in a sultry and babbyish voice that melted his brain. The water is sweet like caramel because of your taste, I want more please kiss me again, Raven. Their kiss was slow and passionate as she began to suck on his tongue for any amount of water to replenish herself. Her eyes narrowed like crescents as she hung on his neck like a koala, and she repeated this until they both drank an entire bottle of 1.5 liters of water slowly. Now hydrated, he began to stroke her body, enjoying her light moans as she felt the pleasure of being a woman. Mmm, don't tease my nipples they are really sensitive and feel ticklish. She protested while pushing them against his hand with more force. His other hand reached behind her waist, grabbing one of her tits, squeezing gently while he teased her nipple with his thumb, sending waves of pleasure coursing through her entire body, her pussy twitching and pulsating as she tried desperately to hold herself together, knowing what would happen next. She couldn't resist anymore when his fingers slid between her thighs, slipping easily into her wetness, feeling hot and slippery as her inner walls clamped tightly around his digits, forcing his middle finger deeper and further, making her gasp and groan, writhing beneath him. The man smiled as he watched her squirm, playing with her clitoris, stroking it softly, watching her struggle to keep quiet but eventually losing control and screaming out loud. Lift your cute little ass a bit. He ordered, with a gruff voice, slapping it with a tap which suddenly caused her body to move with a jolt. It's not little. Isn't it huge? And S-E-X-Y. She lifted her ass as he asked, swaying it from side to side as she called it sexy. Raven was now between her legs, pushing them outward as they moved like lead weights, her sticky snatch spread apart, the entrance filled with thick white nectar that bubbles and seeped from deep inside. I know, that's why I'm going to fuck you like a beast with your ass in the air. He pulled her closer, his orc shaft slapping her ass several times with a wet smack, causing her flesh cheeks to jiggle and shake, before slowly he pressed into her tight and softened hole, a mother's pussy penetrating inside inch by inch, the walls sticking tightly to his glands as the thick horsish cock began to expand and overwrite all the cocks she had ever tasted. On I am a cow, not a beast don't be mean. His eyes could see the same purple and black energy spots as he pushed inside, showing him an almost X.ray view of her cunt, dragging his slightly curved rod along those spots and enjoying her ass shuddering with each thrust them. Oh! mmn.ah.ah.ogod did it hurts dot for the first time in my life. But damn did it feel so good. Mommy feels good. Her words were muffled as she struggled to speak properly, having never been fucked by an orc. Suddenly, all her past experiences faded and vanished completely, his strange touch, the warmth that enveloped her insides whenever he rubbed spots that became sensitive, despite having masturbated often, hoping she could develop herself, these spots were ones she had developed before and felt nothing. 
hum, hum, hm men, faster, ha. Miriam began to breathe and moan with nasal breaths, her sexy and hoarse voice causing his cock to throb inside her. Thanks to Raven, she knew exactly what sex was supposed to feel like. As he continued to push forward, stretching her insides, she cried out, her hands gripping the sheets above her head, trying to find purchase, but finding none, instead holding on tighter and pulling herself upwards, gasping and grunting as she fought to stay conscious, but the pain quickly faded into pleasure and then back again, as if her body wanted to experience everything possible within this short period. A few minutes later, he stopped pumping, allowing his dick to slip free, the gaping hole making obscene and wet sounds as she began to make a pitiful whimper, swaying her tired ass, wanting him to continue, making Raven wonder if he was the prostitute here. Pa. He slapped his heavy orc cock on her ass, the sheer mass causing her fleshy but to indent, leaving it there as their mixed juices smeared over her cheeks, Raven watched this woman as her snatch began to pucker each time he slapped her ass, thinking to the questions she asked at the start, a wicked smile came to his lips as he spoke out. Dear customer, did you enjoy the services of your orc partner tonight? He spoke with his still deep but very soft customer service voice as his thick tip began to stroke along her flooded slit, making her lower body shudder each time it teased to enter, but he pulled away and slapped her ass with a powerful sound. Pa. H.A.A. Customer. You. M. Mm. For a moment, she seemed confused, but instantly her eyes glistened, a delighted and lustful smile appeared on her tired beautiful face, her sweaty hair now stuck to her forehead. I. Dot mm. Love it. It was the best of my life. Dot theta M. Oho. Then, would I be right in saying you love orc dicks, madam? The moment he asked the second question, he pushed his cock inside her warm, welcoming pussy that began to tightly wrap around him as if to greet him home, only penetrating to her shallow entrance, just short of her first major sensitive area, Raven's hips moving slowly, with a wet, squelching sound filling the room. Hahn. <laughs> Too shallow, mmm. Rather. Rather than orc dick. Raven shoved his hips forward violently, feeling the sticky warmth of her depths as his cock penetrated halfway into her cunt, the muscles clenching and releasing rhythmically, sucking him deeper and faster, driving him mad with desire, even though he was already near the edge. Rather. Yes. I prefer orcs. Big strong men who will protect me and give me lots of babies. But not just any orc. Oh God. I have never felt anything like it before. It makes my heart pound and my blood boil. So fucking good. It needs to be an orc that is half dot human and with almond skin and neon blue eyes. The man who taught me this pleasure existed. Made me feel alive. Her eyes widened as she screamed out loudly, her arms falling limp to the sides as she arched her spine off the bed, arching her perfect breasts upward, creating a cleavage that made him drool, moaning deeply as he pumped himself harder and deeper inside her quivering channel. You're cute, Miriam. Your body belongs to me tonight. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Raven. I'm mm, mm, ugh. Yees. Fuck me. With every word spoken, she bounced higher onto his cock her ass bouncing wildly as she pushed her tired hips back with a slippery foam oozing down his shaft. Her words made him grin, sliding another halfway into her slick tunnel before stopping and withdrawing completely. Then he slammed himself hard and fast, burying his whole length in her hot folds. With a grunt, he slammed into her, burying his hard shaft inside her soft, fleshy tunnel. At the same time, his curved tip began to tease the most sensitive part of her pussy, the roof just before her womb, his cock rubbing and prodding that place, sending shockwaves of ecstasy throughout her body, her arms falling limply off the bed, her breasts bouncing up and down as she gasped and screamed, her stomach quivering uncontrollably as she began to convulse, he moans like a distorted moo. Raven didn't want to hold back anymore, he wanted to fill her up, his lust, if enumerated, 
would be 9,999 right now as his hips began to move faster, the stamina of his body easily recharging as her soft ass and pussy wrapped around his cock despite his aggressive and vicious thrusts. Boohoo. Oh yes. A-H-N-N-N. His cock plunged deep inside her pussy, hitting bottom repeatedly, sending shocks of pleasure shooting through her system, making her come once more, her orgasm lasting longer than usual due to how much pleasure she received from his unique physiology. But after she enjoyed two light orgasms, Raven finally climaxed, exploding inside her pussy with such force that it sent vibrations through her entire body, her pussy contracting and milking his cock relentlessly as his seed poured forth, coating her insides with thick gobs of sperm, flooding her cervix and mixing with her fluids, sending her mind spinning with pleasure and joy, making her scream and cry out, begging for more. As both began to take deep breaths, he looked down at the minotaur's perky ass, now lifted higher as his thick white semen began to spew from her entrance like a fountain, unable to tell if the woman was still conscious or even breathing, he leaned back, pulling his cock from her snatch with a loud pop before his semen began to flood the bed from her entrance with loud spluttering and squelching sounds. Phew. Round one is over, what a nice fuck after two weeks. Different from the shallow elves. This minotaur can take my entire cock. Pa. Raven slapped her ass, the semen bubbling from her pussy in response as he moved to get another drink to rehydrate and some form of sugar, as the heat was visible from her body like steam. Miriam, let's have a light snack before we continue. Mmm, enough. Inside the reception, the two girls were now watching the screen intently, eyes wide as they watched the scene in bedroom number 35. A large brown dot-skinned minotaur was on riding a male orc with a handsome face, neon eyes and almond skin while mooing like a normal cow, the time was now 5 a.m., more than six hours since he first entered the Arden Vixen. After five hours of non-stop fucking, Raven finally slowed down and withdrew his massive member from her dripping pussy, letting her slide off the bed, panting heavily as she lay on her back, exhausted yet satisfied. His cock left a long string of thick, jelly dot like semen running from her swollen lips, her puffy snatch and down her chin, across her chest and belly, where it dripped freely, pooling on the floor below her naked form. Thanks for the wonderful night, Miriam, I will see you in a few days, okay? Miriam couldn't reply as she fainted in his arms, her body sore and aching, likely unable to walk or move for a few days. Raven lifted her body and took her into the side room, placing her on a smaller bed, and spent the next 30 minutes cleaning the main bed, flipping the mattress to avoid the sticky patch, wiping her down with soft wipes, then a towel, making sure she was alright before finally tucking her in the huge bed, still a few hours. Still, he stroked her brown hair, clumped it together and left the room after dressing. Whether it was a night or a lifetime, Raven always liked to care for his women after sex, especially humans, who were usually a mess. On his way out, the three foxes from before gave him a very welcome greeting and farewell, all of them looking at him with a more respectful and what seemed to be an excited look. Let's go home. That girl, I hope she managed to sleep. Guess I'll apologize for taking too long, let's be honest and not lie about where I was. Chapter 1717 Half.Orcs Improvement You are listening at NovelFull.Audio Knock knock. A sudden knock on the door labeled 35 sounded, the sound caused the resting minotaur to jolt awake. Wah, mm, mm, where am I? Her body was aching from the activity hours ago, now struggling to move, using all her energy to turn to face the doorway. Ugh. I can still feel him inside me. Like my insides have changed entirely to his shape. Miriam's tired eyes still glazed over as if inside a dream, noticing her clean body and the nice feeling of the silk sheets made her bury into the quilt, ignoring the door's knock. Miriam, it's me, Miyako, I'm coming in. The madam said with a deep and curt voice, different from the cute voice used when speaking with Raven. Creak. The door easily opened as she turned the handle, 
the beautiful mistress of stepping inside with the slight clack of her heels as she took a step back, the sheer density of the aroma of the room filled with Raven's thick masculine scent causing her to get a full meal of essence in moments, not even needing sex. What? How does he have so much excess vitality? Miyako was genuinely shocked as she pushed forward, not wanting to damage her current prestige, while her tail swayed in delight hidden from her sight. The demon fox race was strange, they had a danger rating of B and were normally observed, the more tails they had, the higher the rating, but normally Miyako never revealed more than two in public. Otherwise, she would have a danger level of SSS and be killed or locked away instantly. The fact she serviced many men who are now top politicians in her youth might also help her case and keep her safe. She looked at the exhausted minotaur woman before her, despite the clear pain and fatigue, her skin was glossy, her hair silky with a beautiful sheen as if she had just visited a massage and beauty parlor with the top course of all manner of nutrients and chemicals. With a bitter smile, Miyako wanted to know how it felt, even if her blissful face told her everything, how was he, Miriam? A more friendly voice than before, as she sat down on the same blue marble chair Raven sat in, dragging it close to the bed. Ah! Miriam was about to speak, but then a wet sound echoed, causing her to blush to stop for a moment before continuing. I can still feel him deep inside. Like he's still making me experience that amazing and wonderful feeling repeatedly. Miyako smiled, she cared for the women who worked for her, remembering her horrible younger life and wanting these lost girls to have a better experience than her. The chair creaked when she leaned forward, elbows resting on her soft thighs, squashing the thick meat flat. So. He was huge, dot, mm, very. He was a gentleman and made you feel special. I felt like his lover. Not a prostitute. Who? You said he tasted good. Was it lip service? Miriam tried to lean closer, her face a little red, normally, the questions asked weren't like this, and she was caught off guard. No it was really. Strange. I worry my milk will change its taste. And my little girl will be addicted. Isn't it fine? He said he'd come back, no. Miriam looked at Miyako with a rare stern face before she looked much younger, like a pouting girl. I'll become addicted to that cock, never able to take another. It's already. Depressing to think of another man. His words were so. Miriam seemed to get lost, the words of being his for the night replayed, but she removed the tonight and began to smile gently. Miyako wasn't stupid, this wasn't the first time a girl became hooked on a customer, but it was usually due to their money or powerful emotions after countless visits and meetings, this bastard corrupted her Miriam with one fuck. Miriam. Stop. I know. It's ridiculous for a whore like me, with a child at that, to dream so high. Miriam's face became flat and seemed to face reality as she forced herself to sit up, a clear feeling of sorrow on her face. I should be happy. Now I can still feel sensations down there. Finally, I am a complete woman. That's enough, right? An old woman like me cannot be greedy. Miyako took out a long brown pipe filled with the same stuff that Raven smoked to calm his nerves and increase the circulation of mana, because of the essence left in the room, she was experiencing a sort of overdose compared to her regular restricted diet. Fuck, this man needs to visit every week. This essence could feed all my little girls for a month. She looked at the slightly pitiful minotaur, her chest feeling heavy as she realized that the male was indeed particular and her gut feeling when meeting him was still correct because she wanted to test him. Miyako used the girls like Miriam as a test and seemed to have hurt her in the process. Miriam. If you could. Only serve that client in the future, would you accept? Miriam didn't even take a moment to think, her eyes almost shining as she looked towards her long-time friend and boss. Even if my pay were cut to the bare minimum, I would love to serve him alone, the man that taught me the pleasure of being a woman and treated me like a lover and not a slut. Phew. Miyako took a drag of her pipe, blowing the cedar dot scented smoke into the air, 
her head leaning back as she considered the alternatives, only worried Miriam would suffer if she chose this path. Miriam, if you allow me to keep filming your meetings with him, then selling those videos. I will treat you as his exclusive. Miyako sucked on her pipe, blowing out another burst of smoke, her narrow green eyes were vicious but clear. This was a legitimate offer that could never usually be gotten, his essence was so valuable, and this woman could endure that long with him was a significant portion of her decision to offer. Plus, porn with orc men sold very well, like wildfire in the industry. If you can keep this up for a year, I will give you a contract once you finish. You will receive a portion of the profits and earnings from all videos you make with him. Eh. But. That's. Well, is it okay? Miriam knew that their acts were filmed to protect the girls and offer small clips to potential customers, only the best dot selling girls were offered to become exclusive or given a choice to choose their customers and sell the videos to make up the lost profits. She wasn't stupid and knew it wasn't about her, but rather about Raven. The handsome man's naked appearance flashed in her mind as her lower body tightened with a pleasant sensation. Will he be all right? His image shown to many women. And men, won't it affect his image? Miriam. You. A few orgasms, and you're falling for the guy. Can a customer not be in the strike zone of my taste? He was mature. Handsome. His cock was huge. And he treated me so nicely, cleaning me down when I was full of filthy fluids. Changed the bed. He could have just left, you to know. Sigh, for a grown mother. Why are you so cute? Miyako said, her atmosphere no longer severe as she smiled at this huge woman rolling on the bed like a teenage girl. Humph. The minotaur snorted through her nose. Don't worry, all the clients sign a waiver when they choose this brothel, you know that. For him, though, because he's an orc and it's dangerous if his identity is known, we might lose our meal ticket. I will blur his face, maybe only the highest dot paying females can see it in person if they pay the right price. Fufu I love big money, after all. Miriam nodded, she didn't have any issues, and if the only alternative was to sleep with countless other men, be told to act like a cow and drink their nasty milk then, of course, she would rather sleep with him, not foolish enough to expect anything more than a relationship of the flesh but even that made her feel enriched with a warm sensation in her abdomen, turning to face Miyako. I'll do it. Good, but make sure you don't tell him, let's see how he treats you over time, thinking you have been with other men all the while, test his character and true self. Okay. I, isn't that. You want to know, though, right? Will he still want to embrace you, despite knowing you might have been with another man the night before or even hours before? You are so twisted. Fufu for the compliment, I thank you, Miriam. Take a long rest, I'll be giving you a large bonus for tonight, from now on, you only need to come here and rest, if he doesn't show, it's fine to enjoy some rest. He seems to be an adventurer, so it will be rare to visit earlier than midnight, I can always call you in. So spend more time with your cute little daughter. Little. She's nineteen. Miyako stood from the chair, her tail swaying as she moved to the door, a large and wicked smile on her face, not only securing a valuable test subject in Miriam, but the essence she absorbed today was enough for her as an SSS rank demon fox to be full for a month. Raven. Raven. Who knew you were such a jackpot for our monster races? Maybe the day you fuck me as Miyu, the prostitute, as you said, isn't that far off. Many girls are hungry and need your orsish love. The moment the door closed, and she began to relax on the bed, thinking of the tall, dark and handsome raven, she felt a sense of discomfort inside her womb. A minute later, dark and purple energy began to flow through Miriam's body in reverse, from her vagina towards her head, filling her injured muscles and insides, repairing and improving them, after 72 rotations before it faded. The sensation left her on the bed shuddering, having reached climax from the strange energy after every twelve rotations, leaving her now relaxed and sleepy, 
without the muscle pain and feeling more powerful than before as she slipped into a comfortable sleep. Only her daughter and Raven entered her wonderful dreams, calling their names as she rolled under the silk sheets. Meanwhile, on the late bus home, his body filled with a pleasant sensation as the strange pink energy cycled around his body faster until, after 144 rotations, it began to fade and vanished. 144, 12 by 12. Is it related to the 12 gates of bliss? Once the energy had finished cycling, all his fatigue and tired feelings vanished. He felt a little stronger and more flexible, taking out his card and noticing the subtle but clear increases in many of his attributes. When he closed his eyes in this wonderful state, there was a huge image in his mind, with a mystical feeling, surrounding him was a dark and purple mist, with a single path that led him forward. Where does it lead? Raven noticed a huge black gate appear, the door was filled with the image of a male who looked identical to him, with countless alluring and beautiful women naked and climbing over his body as if addicted to him. The gate had a pink glow, with an indentation that went across the gate's top, it was like a huge ruler, which went up to the number 12, as the pink glow and mist all began to gather in that indentation, reaching a small notch, seeming to reach the number 1 and stopping as the mist faded, now spent. Is that how to open a new gate? Sleeping with women. Making them feel pleasure and sharing that strange energy that is both a liquid and mist. Did this benefit Miriam too? I need to buy a cheap scouting lens. Attributes, average equals 1, strength. 3.6 agility. 1.6 stamina. 5.6 vitality. 5.6 intellect. 2.4 wisdom. 2.2 My physical attributes increased by 0.1, not bad considering I only railed that beautiful minotaur for a few hours. She felt amazing. Let's visit her soon, I will try another girl when I start earning more and can visit more often. Today is Friday. Let's make Fridays a night for Miriam. Lost in thought, he almost got another erection remembering her soft brown body, luckily, the cultivation technique now allowed him to control his lust as it was sated and flowed around his body happily each moment that passed. His stop approached, so Raven pressed the bell, since this was a different bus, the driver was an obese goblin, seeming to have been a bit too lazy for the financial examinations, but he was a pleasant guy and even offered a cold drink to Raven seeing his pale looking face when he boarded. Thanks for the nice ride, take care, driver. Raven got off the bus, Greeting the driver pleasantly as the doors closed with their loud hiss, the drivers laughed and well wishes, making Raven smile, stepping forward, now only a few minutes from home as the clock was nearly 6 a.m. Let's make her a good breakfast. If she's still here. He stood on the corner momentarily, seeing the sun slowly rising, making him feel a strange sensation, brushing his hair back. Tonight felt so long. I am happy to have survived, though. Chapter 1818 Half, Orc and Manticore you are listening at NovelFull.audio Click Finally, Raven made it home just past 6.35am before he returned, making sure to pop into the 24.hour supermarket to buy some basic ingredients, spring onions, eggs, milk and sweet bread as he read some women preferred to have sweeter bread when eating a salty breakfast. Maybe she will be different, a manticore doesn't taste the same as a human. Russell. He placed the bags on the side, flipping the lights on the dim setting, his ears only able to hear the light snores of the cute girl, thinking back to how they separated, he felt irresponsible and shouldn't have left so suddenly. I hope she managed to sleep all right. Slowly moving into the living room, he saw the beautiful girl in his mind. Lilith's body was too tall for the two-dot seat sofa, but still, she was sleeping curled up, despite there being a bed for her. She was watching a romantic drama show that aired 24-7, currently in the penultimate episode where the human finally accepts the woman who revealed she was a sea monster a few episodes earlier, and they became distant. Silly girl. Her body was still half-naked, only wearing the spare panties that were bought long ago by Phyllis but never used, the alluring brown skin, glossy and sleek, 
as she shifted her body, letting out a strange murmur. Raven didn't look for long, leaning towards her, his hands slid under her soft buttocks and upper back, lifting her into a princess carry, Lilith must have been dreaming about the drama on the television as she wrapped around his neck with her arms, nuzzling him with her slightly wet nose. Mmmmen, smells so good nmh. Lilith murmured with her nose pressed against his neck, the soft pink lips brushing across his chest, causing him to feel excited from her mere presence. Hop. He put more strength into his arms, trying to ignore the warmth of her soft skin, how her body seemed to pull on his fingers, making them sink inside. Now that he was part manticore, her scent was different, like a finely aged wine, with hints of cinnamon, blueberries and a dash of dark chocolate and orange zest, to others, it might be a bit strange. This girl, if I don't manage my libido, there's no telling what might happen. His thoughts returned to the beautiful Miriam, her mature curves, and the cute Miyu with her soft fox tail and cute body. Still, it was a divine scent for Raven, causing his orsish nose to sniff more as he walked towards the bedroom, his upper body solid, the thick muscles easily carrying the lightweight in his arms. Squeak. The sound of the mattress springs filled the room as he slowly placed her in the black bed, pulling back the sheets gently tucking her in, the almond skin and her soft face were different now she slept, not like a thug or aggressive little girl, but gentle and adorable. Raven's hand stroked through her hair, enjoying how silky smooth it felt running through them like soft fabric. He narrowed his eyes, looking towards the parts that pushed out, alluring in where her scent was the densest. Even if something should one day happen with this girl, I will never let it be some spur of the moment, his hands brushed the hair from her face, tucking it behind her pointed ears as her nose twitched. But that's for the future, the whole Phyllis left is far too big for me, let's focus on adventuring and enjoying my new life. Sleep well, Lilith. When you wake up, let's have breakfast together. Raven's large body stood from the bed, once again trying to avoid the loud creak and noise, wishing to let her rest some more as he quietly looked back, a warm smile on his face and feeling that just having someone to come home to made his life feel more fulfilling. Click. The moment the door closed, Lilith's beautiful eyes opened a vibrant purple watching the spot Raven just occupied, her hand stroking the covers, still warm from his body, as she cuddled closer to that spot. Mmm, you could have stayed longer. Stupid orc. I am not that scary, right? Hmph. His smell is too dangerous now. Why did his simple movements make my heart go crazy? Was I always this easy, a girl? Will my panties be off next time, and will I greet him in the nude? Lilith scolded herself, still sticking her nose into the bed, her body filled with a sense of delight, filling her body and stomach with a dense and delicious essence, more than double the usual amount. Fufu, such a strange man. Why is his scent so sweet, like a freshly baked cherry pie with warm cream? Her eyes opened again, fluttering towards the door before slowly closing as if exhausted from her full stomach, resting her head on the soft, fluffy pillow with a fresh cotton scent. Hee hee a warm bed. So comfy. She said with a muted yelp, rolling in the sheets and kicking her legs, no longer sleeping on a bench, forced to keep one eye open and protect her innocence each night. Well. This place is more likely for me to lose it. Last night was dangerous. He was so big. And hard. A little scary. Lilith's body rolled and the covers suddenly flattened, spreading out fully, as she took a deep breath before closing her eyes and seeing a certain image in her mind. Raven, carrying her to the room, his handsome face seemed even more alluring and well chiseled, not looking at her naked body sneakily. Which made her feel a sense of delight, but also a bit angry that he didn't look at least once. Stupid. I know you enjoy touching my ass, though. You kept caressing the crack. Her lips formed a large smile as she began to giggle, looking towards the living room and relaxing her body, the tiredness of staying up late overwhelmed her, succumbing to a morning nap and whispering a few words of honest gratitude in her sleepy voice. Thank you. Raven. For making me feel welcome. I feel like. 
like this could become my home one day. Meanwhile, in his private room, a loud banging filled the room, accompanied by the grunts and panting of Raven. Bang! Ha! Hop! His fist smashed into a steel pole around a meter thick, with slight indentations along the center, wrapped with about an inch of cloth. Single jabs, flowing into a flurry of hooks and a powerful haymaker, imagining the enemy was that goblin archer that managed to pierce his shoulder. If that was Lilith or me before changing. Damn it. I am still too green. Focus, remember, train. The moment his fist collided with the cloth, the sheer force of his muscles caused the room to shake, thankfully, the resident below moved out a month ago, still waiting for someone to move in. He continued to repeat several patterns his mother created when he was a teenager, she made a guide for him long until he was forty years old, due to orcs living a much longer life than humans, they didn't reach full maturity until 60.70 years old, even later if they managed to evolve their bodies in the dungeons. Ha, ha. Sweat was pouring down his naked body, each muscle being worked to the limit. In the past, he paid a portion of his money to soundproof this training room, filled with heavy, large weights designed by his mother for orcs to train themselves, needing more than a human to achieve the same burn. His body dropped to its knee, taking long deep breaths, once at the limit, he could feel that strange energy again, but this time it was filled with dark purple and black mist, the pink mist from Miriam was gone. To Noel that and the more work he did, the more it built up and roamed around his body, even he could notice his faintly sweet scent now when he sniffed. This is so strange. My body odor is so sweet. By chance, is this the mist that benefits women? Or is rather the essence that those monsters and manticores need to live? Raven began to wipe himself down, the sticky beads of sweat dripping onto the black towel below his feet, still small amounts of the sticky black tar he found when waking up after taking in those stones. Am I still not cleaned thoroughly inside? Can I use this dark purple mist for myself? I feel like I can control it if I focus. He sat down, his legs crossed naked, the sunlight pouring through the window as the building across would easily see his magnificent form. If the landlord mentioned a buff, well dot and doubt orc lived there, female renters would be flooding the place. Let's try. His eyes began to glow brightly, the luminous neon blue filling the room, focused, he began to tense his abdomen, the muscles in his body almost entirely under his control, able to even delay his orgasm without using his hands. Otherwise, he'd have finished inside Miriam sooner. Slowly the mist began to follow his desire, tensing his right abdomen, trying to make it enter into his right thigh, wanting to empower his legs, the mist like a prowling snake slithering through a fluorescent forest, it drifted down his body before it lingered just above his thigh, as sweat formed along his face, oozed down his back as he tried to force the mist into his muscle. Thud. Bang. His body snapped back, hitting the stone floor with his back almost bouncing from the current impact. Arc. Nevertheless, the pain in his back was nothing compared to the agony of his leg, his thigh muscles wriggling like worms trapped under his flesh, cramping, twisting, and almost tearing as tears began to ooze from Raven's eyes. Ugh. H. God. This pain was beyond his ability to endure, biting onto his hand to avoid disturbing Lilith, looking down as blood began oozing from the deep marks in his hand, while his leg was visibly twisting and convulsing before the bone itself began to crack and fracture making his muted cries fill the room. Time passed, the morning sun soon turning to an early midday shine, his naked body on display for several hours now. Finally, the pain began to subside, his filthy body covered in a slimy layer of dried sweat, his legs slowly recovering thanks to his, manticore heart, skill but the fear of doing things with his technique now deeply etched into his heart. Fuck. I need to make something to eat. I am such an idiot. He went for a quick shower, cleansing his body and washing away the horrible goopy sensation, in his haste, he forgot to close the door, as it slowly drifted open, this apartment had two bathrooms, but one was an end suite in his main room. Today in his absent mind, still filled with fear of suffering, 
he forgot about Lilith and started showering. Clack. The door suddenly opened, his body stiffened momentarily, but he continued to wash, thinking, she will surely see my clothes and underwear beside the door and know. Creak. She doesn't know. Raven wasn't a virgin and only felt flustered momentarily, deciding to do the adult thing and continue washing. He didn't want to see her naked body because of the raging mist in his body, no, he was not like that. Who is anyone kidding here? The moment he heard the shuffling of feet, the sound of clothes being slipped off, falling to the ground after sliding against her soft flesh, his little raven began to live to the skies, almost pushing the water away from his body, standing so proud and tall. Trickle. He was forced to listen to her finishing her business, even the little shake of her ass, before wiping herself and flushing the toilet, to his shock, the girl didn't leave, letting out a little yawn and speaking to herself as she sniffed loudly. Ah. I smell like sweat. Let's shower again. Her hand wrapped around the thick black curtain as she finally began to wake up. Hmm. Why is the water running? Then, like all curious people, Lilith opened the shower, revealing a huge orc male, naked with a bulging erection that almost slapped her face as they both faced each other, completely naked, as if repeat of the night before. Ah. It's really big, huh? Lilith said, trying to regain her mind, fixated on the thick essences leaking from his body and the huge weapon now bouncing before her eyes. Yeah. Orc blood. Handy, right. You almost done. She asked with a normal voice, her face bright red but without dramatic or cliché reaction. Ah, just finished. You want to get in? Mmm, -hmm, sure. Umph. Just like that, she pushed his cock out of the way, her hand seeming to slide down the shaft before releasing it as her soft brown body entered the shower, pushing his away with her ass before her tail began to pick up different shampoos and body wash helping her clean herself. I'll go make something to eat after getting dry. Mmm. I want to have jam on my toast. Since she wasn't being weird, he acted cool and calm, leaving the bath, grabbing a black towel from the rack, and picking up his clothes, leaving quickly from the door with a loud thud. The moment he left, she began to sniff the hand that touched his member, her face a little strange as her nostrils flared up and seemed to be enjoying a delicacy. Enough essence in that simple touch for two days. Orc cock is amazing. Dot theta m Lilith whispered in the warm shower, her hair filled with strawberry dot scented shampoo and bubble suds. What a great morning. Hee hee. Chapter 1919. Half Orc invited to a party. You are listening at novel full dot audio. SSSS. The hissing of the silver pan filled the room as Raven added two drips of white wine, with a zesty and clear taste and a light dash of oil gently heating the thick and juicy five dot credit salmon fillets with a light garlic butter glaze. A wonderful flavor filled the kitchen with a strong and aromatic scent as Raven wore his apron, humming the pianist's lament while cooking, adding two eggs to the boiling water, and planning to poach them to Lilith's liking. Raven looked back to see Lilith, now watching television with her borrowed pajamas kicking her legs as she watched the news. Last night, a group of criminals managed to maim and kill a goblin adventurer. The Lamia newscaster announced in a clear and well-spoken voice, as the afternoon sun was high in the air pouring into the medium apartment through the western windows. Ah, what a dangerous world will my handsome orc protect this innocent little girl. Lilith began to sing a strange song that caused Raven's face to twitch. Who is a damn innocent little girl, don't think you're wailing like a cat in the heat wasn't heard, I imagine the neighbors will think I have a new woman already. TSK, not to mention you're as deadly as a Venus fly trap. Raven, did you add butter to my fish, salt my eggs? Hoo hoo I like salty eggs hoo hoo with tomato sauce please feed the poor starving girl food. He shook his head, snapping off the heat for the fish as he just flipped them for 90 seconds for the perfect crunch, the eggs were from a strange beast named a cockatrice. Each cost two credits and was the size of Raven's fist, like a small football. This girl. 
since this morning in the bath, her sense of distance suddenly vanished. Is it thanks to this? Raven thought, noticing that when he made things or did things for Lilith, the purple mist would enter the food or object and then pass directly into her body, leaving pink energy left her body moments later after she seemed perkier and more refreshed and lingered until he entered her range. Dot clack. He snapped open the expensive glass tomato sauce without any extra ingredients or water and other fluids to thin it out, letting a dollop land perfectly in the center of the poached eggs. Which looked like little plums with a slight dent where the tomato spread like a little lake. With a clean cloth, he wiped the edges, making sure none of the sauce dripped onto the garlic butter salmon, before carrying the plate over to her side. Oh. Food is here good work, good work. Raven felt she needed something to do in the meantime, not wanting her to be bored here alone, thus decided to get the laptop and hook it to the interweb allowing her to learn at least or have fun. Enjoy, I'll be going to work again today, but you can relax here if you want something to do. I've already sorted the food and general waste earlier. How about you sort the rubbish into paper, plastic and combustive trash for me? Mm -hmm. I want to eat meat for dinner then, okay. Somehow Raven himself was shocked at how easily this girl settled into his home, maybe the sudden absence of Phyllis also left him quite open to having someone to keep him company, too, as long as she eventually could get a job. Then he would also take her with him, allowing her to get an income, branch out, and explore the world herself. Oh. It's delicious. She whispered in a serious and honest tone, not a playful voice. Her eyes looked towards Raven, who sat on the single chair, his plate on the arm and a dark coffee on the other in a slotted cup. He turned his head, giving a gentle smile and enjoyed the slight reactions this girl sometimes showed. Thank you, it's the most delicious food I've tasted for as long as I can remember. Raven looked into her eyes, giving her a warm smile. Eat it while hot. As long as you behave, I'll cook for you until you leave. No matter how long it takes to stand up alone, don't worry, treat this as your home. Mm -hmm. Quietly the pair enjoyed their meal after finishing the special report about the sub.race murderers finished as the pair let out a synchronized belch, one deep and loud, the other quiet and more graceful. For a woman. Why do you burp like an old man? Raven looked at her with narrow eyes as he spoke, a smirk on his lips. In response, the manticore blushed before getting rebellious. Humph. I am paying the correct homage to tasty food. Whatever, let me get the laptop so you can do something after finishing with the trash and rubbish. Oh. Victory. He ignored the stupid girl bouncing on his clean sofa, messing up the cushions as her tail began to dance and almost tear apart the cloth. Raven entered the room Phyllis would use when busy with work, the place was now fairly empty, the dust missing in the shapes of folders and stacks of paper, as the laptop he bought her when they first moved in together was lying on the desk as if brand new. This was the first time he had entered the room since she left, only to find a small envelope with a pink love heart on the back, with, to Alice. Chapter 20 Bonus, 20. Burning Cove, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. I'm heading out now, be a good girl and don't play with fire. Raven's cheerful voice sounded as he left the apartment wearing a pair of silk trousers, a white shirt and a red suit jacket, for some reason, she noticed he always wore suits when leaving the house. Well, it's probably the influence of his dad. Lilith thought as she looked at the morning shrine in the corner, a human male who looked nothing like Raven apart from his eyes wore a different style of suit over his leather armor in each picture. His mom was so pretty. Bang. Clack. Once she heard the door fully closed, her eyes narrowed as she looked at the laptop, now running with a pleasant hum. He he lets browse his secret files. Click. Lilith would first see if anything was embarrassing on his laptop wanting to find and laugh at him later for leaving her alone again, even though she wasn't angry, she still wanted to get revenge for him teasing her about sex and her thin pubic hair. Hmm, boring. Work stuff. Eh. What's this? 
a folder with lots of video files, unlabeled and hidden thumbnails. Bingo. Hee <laughs> hee. Her hand dragged the mouse, clicking the video labeled, 1, and choosing the video leveled, 5, randomly, the next moment, the, MLC, video player began to run, instantly her eyes widened as she saw a fantastic sight. Ah fuck my ass yeah. Alistair. That orc dick is churning my slutty elven hole fuck me until my insides are torn apart. Yeah baby. I love you, I love you dot. Click. Despite seeming to be inside her ass, it was penetrating her pussy, as Lilith's eyes were watching the scene, her fingers began to match the speed of his piston, her breathing growing rough. Lilith's heart began to race, instantly stopping the video, the image of a huge, arm dot like penis spreading a pretty blonde woman's puss wide. The girth was something she was familiar with, it's raven's cock, after seeing it only this morning in its full glory, those bumps, thick veins, and the dark color and bend were all his. So his real name is Alistair. The stunning blonde elf's face was distorted in pleasure as a thick white goo bubbled and squirted from her vagina while Raven tasted her rear hole, causing the young manticore to feel a tickle in her lower body. He already came inside. Who is this woman? She pressed play for another moment, watching as the white cum sprayed from the elf's pussy the moment his huge orc cock penetrated her cunt fully, like a water gun. Phyllis, you're such a filthy little bitch. Do all your elf family know you're a slut who loves orc cock, despite being such a dainty and pure elf? Shall I take a video and send it to your mother? No Noah please. Just. Fuck me. God why does it feel so good? Lilith got up from the black sofa, her little legs dashing towards the door, pulling across the chain, then shut all the curtains, closing the windows with the bolt. Once sure that no light or people could hear or get inside, even Raven, she began to undress, sitting on the edge of the sofa, placing the laptop to the side and streaming the image to the large 50-inch screen, taking a small box of tissues from the table and putting both feet on either side of the table, with her legs spread. Let's start from number one. Click. Why are you recording Alistair? No my pussy it's not clean. Don't lick it so happily. On oh no it's still bright. The moment it began to play, only a sticky wet sound, the movement of the black sofa rubbing against the door, and the slightly muted pants of a woman's husky voice filled the apartment. Meanwhile, from the video, Raven felt a strange sensation as he made his way through the slums, he hated this place. The dirty scent of rotting garbage, people who haven't washed for days and the nauseating aroma of human waste that oozed from the small alleys and sewers close below. I hate this place. Raven could control the enhanced scent when it came to women. However, the scent of filth and dirt was something he could only endure, the smell was so bad tears formed in the corner of his eyes. Ten minutes away. It's 5.24 p.m. He checked the time and began to hasten his steps, the people sitting on the ground or in their poor dot quality doors, eyes sunken with dull light. These people lacked even the vibrance and hoped to beg for spare credits, they looked at the powerful orc rushing through the slums and shrunk back, scared of his powerful figure. It's not that I hate the people themselves, but rather the situation that created them. Giving them credit won't solve the root problem, and these people are useless, the light of life in their eyes long extinguished. Burning Cove was a dungeon that was quite easy and surprising, although the name insinuated a hot cavern with lava or flames, it was nothing of the sort, or rather the low dot level novice area that low ranks could enter. I didn't know that. Raven thought as he read the information on his wrist, confirming their weaknesses and known strengths. Dot theta and the most common enemy were kobolds, a feral race covered in fur that loved killing and eating any flesh due to their constant hunger and famine. That reminds me, I should make a credit account for that little pervert back home. He still had quite a lot of excess savings, when he resolved to become an adventurer, he stopped using that account for anything but the rent and bills, with around 600 credits, it was enough for quite a long time, thus, he would slowly increase it with the excesses profits from his new job. 
Raven stepped on a crushed can, his heavy frame crushing it flat with no effort as a group of children ran over and snagged the flat can after he left, looking at him with vigilance. A single can would earn one credit if you traded it to the recycling plant's automated bot, but it needed to be completely flat. So children in the slum would throw cans under people's feet to make their living if they could not steal anything significant from people who stupidly came through the slums. The burning cove, monolith was more than triple the size of Wailing Caverns, with one entrance in the slums, near the exit for rookies. The other two faced the business and night districts, more than 5,000 meters away on each side, as the slums and the two districts were like interlocked triangles. When the city was first created, the slums were planned to be a cheap, residential district for those working in the business district to live and travel to work easily. However, it fell through due to the appearance of the monolith. It's huge. Oh, there are actual guards at this one. Raven noticed there were two males with long swords, and small plasma guns, which were only helpful for people outside dungeons, anything that involved technology for some reason would deal nearly no damage to the monsters, which still confused scientists and alchemists of the world to the present day. He assumed it was just those two when suddenly his heart almost stopped, a woman with long ears, beautiful blonde hair and sharp blue eyes stepped from the portal, her body wearing the official bureau armor and holding a bloody spear. Why is she here? The moment he saw that woman, instantly his heart and breathing became erratic, forced to fumble through his pockets and take out a cedar dot scented dragon stick, the soft feel of the mouthpiece and smooth taste entering his lungs slowly calming him down as he walked forward, wanting to finish his check to go inside. His body stepped towards the gate as two guards accosted him, their vigilance likely due to the report on the news about demi-hunters, people who chose to party up with non-humans and then murder them with cruel and violent methods. Halt. Present your identification and bureau card. The two males might seem combative, but this was their job. Raven was happy to oblige, taking his identification out slowly, clearly indicating his intention for no violence, as the pair began to read the information. Okay, everything seems in order. Thank you for your company operation, good hunting newbie. Oh. If it isn't the bastard that abandoned my sister after. The elven woman's voice stopped as if remembering she was told not to speak about something. Her silver eyes narrowed, looking at Raven intently, this woman was the younger sister of Phyllis. She used to stick to him like glue until a week after they broke up and accosted him angrily. So you go by Raven now. Hmm, admirable, your mother, right. Maybe being an adventurer will help make you realize your mistakes. Delia. How is? Don't ask how my sister is. You don't have that right, coward. She snapped, before pointing her spear towards the portal, now are you entering? Although she spoke harshly, there was no actual hate, now that he was a monster himself, he could feel the slight sensations and feelings of women, for males, it was much less vibrant. So he knew that despite being tough, Delia felt concerned and worried for him, her eyes watching his body with no armor, fidgeting as she gripped her steel spear, but too stubborn to say anything after everything she had said. What do you know? This girl wasn't so confusing, she just became a woman. No wonder she stopped clinging to me. He didn't think he was dense, but before having this slight edge when speaking to women, these little details wouldn't be noticed unless they were about Phyllis herself. Thud. Thud. The loud footsteps of two males and the light taps of a female sounded from behind him. He knew there was a female from the scent, however, from her body was the thick scent of two males, which caused him to filter out her scent instantly. Raven thought they might be his party for today as he turned around to see two males, who seemed rather harmless, one used a longbow while the other with twin swords as they both had the same tattoo on their shoulder. Behind them was a cute dot looking woman with the same tattoo on her chest. Between the open robes, it peeked out, her staff seemed to be that of a low dot class mage or witch. Excuse me, are you, by chance, Raven, who will be our, tank, today? The twin sword user smiled pleasantly, his face was the typical rugged human type, 
with short brown hair and eyes. Ah, that's me. Raven didn't speak well to new people, the distrust still deeply ingrained in his body as he took out his mother's axe with a loud sound of metal cutting through the air. Schling. The enormous 190 centimeters axe was taller than the male, who at first looked at him with a scrutinizing gaze, but the moment he saw him holding the axe quickly with one hand, he shrugged and nodded to himself. Good axe. My name is Bryn, the sneaky archer is Colin, and the cute witch is Marie. The bureau said you were willing to be our tank and only take 10% of the credits, is that correct? Dot, hey. Colin greeted with a faint smile and lifted his hand to wave. H. Hello. Marie seemed to act like some innocent woman, despite having sex with both of these guys in the past 12 hours, whether together or hidden from the pair, Raven didn't care too much. Damn, Emily left out important details, but whatever. She's giving me 30 credits extra, and I'll make her reimburse me in other ways on Friday. Shall we head inside? Raven asked with a charming and deep voice. He acted oblivious to the annoying flushed cheeks of the witch who ogled his body in the most obvious way as he turned around as walked towards the gate, only for Delia to lean into his ear and whisper. Alistair, be careful. It's not safe recently as the number of Demi-related murders has almost tripled. Make sure you don't let your guard down. See. She was a nice girl, really. Raven thought to himself after smiling at her. He didn't need much effort, Raven wouldn't trust them even if she didn't mention anything. Raven could only count on himself and would never make a stupid mistake like trusting people he met on the same day. Wait. Raven. Accept the party invite. Beep. Raven lifted his arm, looking at the flashing bracelet that wrapped around his thick wrist bulging with muscle, as he observed the screen ignoring mutters of Marie. Oh God. His forearm is so thick. How big is his? Bryn invited you to a party, except. Why slash n he looked back, his raven dot black hair handsomely swayed as his neon blue eyes narrowed on the three party members before swiping, yes, and entering the dungeon without another word, only giving a polite nod and smile to Bryn. Once again, the portal this tight might have been red, but it was comfortable for him as the thick purple energy in his body pulsated, seeming to be at some limit, causing him to feel a little tight and bloated as his figure dissipated and vanished from sight.